So for some time now, people have been talking about what have been termed ghost jobs. If you've never heard of these before, ghost jobs are job postings that, for various reasons, are left unfilled, generally on purpose. If you are someone in the market for a new job, this is likely affecting your success in finding one, unfortunately. In today's video, we'll be getting more into this kind of job posting, but also a parallel I see between the reasons hiring managers make them and how women commonly use dating applications. If I had to explain all of this with two words, I'd say false advertising. This trend of essentially useless job posts is a topic that has been circulating for years now, with research labs attempting to gauge just how common they really are. As Rebellio Labs interestingly found, no one is hired for 50% of job postings. Unsurprisingly, there has also been a significant increase in reviews on employment websites mentioning the word ghosting. What is the reason for all this? Well, one survey of over 1,000 hiring managers by Clarify Capital provides some well-deserved answers, which may piss you off. One reason for companies posting these ghost jobs, more specifically 50% by the way, is simply to maintain a pool of potential job candidates regardless of whether they plan on hiring anyone at the time or not. Another common reason is for the motivation of current employees. I initially heard about this reason when watching a video by Clear Value Tax, and this parallels with another reason hiring managers would make these posts, which was to falsely appease a company's overworked staff. Essentially, and as was explained in the video, which you can find a link to below, an overworked employee may complain about their current work conditions. Instead of the company actually doing anything about this, they resort to stringing the employee along by posting a fake job ad to make it appear as though they have the employee's best interest in mind while telling them to keep up the good work. On top of this, and as was reported by hiring managers, is the added benefit of falsely making it appear as though the company is growing by posting ghost jobs or fake positions. There are additional reasons such as for getting to delete postings and not even having a particular reason, so check the link below if this topic interests you. When I first heard about all of this, a number of thoughts ran through my head, one of which being that it's as if these hiring managers took notes from women who use dating applications. Let me explain. In the current job market, an increasing number of companies are posting ghost jobs. This actually artificially inflates their perceived value through presenting a false state of growth, and as clear value tax brought up, can actually result in their stock value increasing. Of course, this is to the detriment of overworked current employees, as they are strung along in the process, falsely made to think that help is on the way, that the company has their back, and with the goal of getting them to continue working under these conditions. Now, as I've talked about in a previous video, the main reason women use dating applications is for validation followed by finding a relationship. Like these hiring managers posting ghost jobs, they may have no intention of talking to anyone or ghost them soon after, as is commonly the experience of many applicants seeking employment. These dynamics furthermore serve to enhance the woman's perceived value through establishing essentially a job posting with candidates constantly putting in their applications. And like that of the ghosted applicant, as well as the overworked employee, they can be strung along throughout this process, despite the woman having no intention of selecting amongst the pool of available candidates, so to speak. Women today expect men to perpetually pursue them as potential candidates, even if only to purposely reject them in order to gain a perceived status boost, whether only in their mind or amongst other women, as it paints the image that the woman is in high demand, bolstering the ego. Companies are using this same strategy to not only maintain a constant pool of job candidates, but to similarly reap the benefits of public validation through the false perception of company growth, also meaning they are in high demand. As a result, you end up with the expected common assertions of there being more opportunities today than ever before. But in all actuality, they appear to be on the decline, with many people giving up on the dynamic completely. While decisions at the individual level will play a role in a man's success, such as personal grooming or how he formats his resume, whether looking at job listings or dating app, the dynamic he is made to engage in is one which is not only misleading, but a gamble that, 
in many cases, it's set up to not only string him along, but exploit him. Notably, these dynamics play a more significant role in how successful the individual man will be, as is the case with factors such as the genetic cards one has been dealt and their overall success in the mating marketplace as well as the workforce. Before closing out this video, I want to briefly get back into the subject of women's sadistic behavior towards men, as it's not only a subject that I find highly interesting, but there is something that came to mind which, in my eyes, points directly to just how ingrained this kind of behavior is. As Dr. Robert Buffo put it, the attraction between the sexes is not primarily or generally associated with the order of feelings, which we denote as tender feelings, affection, love. These have developed comparatively late in the course of organic evolution and have arisen in relation to entirely different functions. The primitive and by far the most prevalent association of the sexual impulse is not with love, but with the opposite feelings of callous cruelty and delight in the infliction and the spectacle of pain. Now, where else do we see such behavior outside of the adult woman today? Well, we see it in children. Growing up, I enjoyed watching a television show titled Hey Arnold, which, if you haven't watched it, unsurprisingly, the main character's name is Arnold, and there was a girl named Helga who was secretly interested in him. And how does Helga express this? By engaging in put-downs, bullying, and repeated acts of aggression. Undeveloped behaviors one would expect from a child, but not an adult. Boys and girls commonly engage in acts such as bullying and even hitting each other, as a physical expression of their interest in a particular person. Now, as I said in the previous video, it appears that this mode of interaction is not present in men today, despite it still being common in women. Why would this be the case? I think at least part of the answer is rather simple. This gets trained out of boys from an early age by extension of their being taught to never hit a woman, and furthermore, to be nice to them, likely a lesson more so pushed by the mother figure and especially in the event she is raising the child by herself, a common state of affairs today, as she is aware that he will become stronger than her and there is no father figure present. So as a result of this lesson only being instilled in boys, we end up with not only adult women not having progressed past this infantile, sadistic, or violent state, but men who are expected to endure it. On a closing note, People will commonly bring up ways of navigating this interaction style, and there are even books on the subject, but they ultimately come down to appeasing the other party, giving them what they desire, a dominant response. What I'll say about this is, if you're a man who is actively pursuing women, you're okay with enduring this kind of behavior indefinitely over the course of a relationship, because that's what you will be doing if you entertain it, or you're just looking for a hookup, then this makes sense. If you're a man who does not pursue women, however, I view providing such women what they want as tantamount to appeasing the crying four-year-old in the middle of a grocery store who throws a temper tantrum because they want you to buy them ice cream. Sure, you could just give them what they want, but you're ultimately positively reinforcing their bad behavior, teaching them that they can repeat the process in the future to obtain a desired result.